I'm a crook. I can tell you that now that I'm out of the business, I profited off grief and put a price tag on hope. Go ahead and judge me. I deserve it. I was the geezer standing by your mother's coffin and offering you the chance to speak to her again. You lapped me up, drowned me in cash, and untaxed earnings. Why wouldn't you? There's three sorts of psychics. The first sort are the professionals. They know that the tales they're spinning are nonsense, but they're smart enough to say the right things. They notice little things about you. Wedding rings, engagement rings, your grandma's rusty locket around your neck. They're expert statisticians and can work out the likelihood of medical traumas and life events with an uncanny perceptiveness. They know that everyone has an Uncle John or a dad that called them princess. They tell you what you want to hear. Granddad is standing behind me and he thinks your fiance is an honest chap. That was me. I was chasing the money train and boy did I get paid. The second sort are the whack jobs. They believe it, all the nonsense and crazy. They hear voices in their heads and slap a price tag on it. They sit on a throne of crystals and myth and you buy what they say because they buy it themselves. I've never met the third sort, the real psychics, but I'm certain they exist. As for just one solitary day with one particular client, I was the real thing. The experience was enough to make me pack the whole scam in. I'm in insurance now. The stats come in handy. I want to tell you about that day. I don't know why I'm unearthing it all again. For catharsis, maybe. I'd like to think someone like me will read this. A scam artist ripping off the barrier. And that maybe this tale will make them think twice. Before lighting a few candles round a table. And claiming to speak for the dead. You see, the dead can speak just fine for themselves. It was a regular day. The weather sucked. The bills had to be paid. I had a few clients in the afternoon. Some regular old ladies with dead husbands that bought everything I told them. I had found their Facebooks and had a wealth of memorials to give them. I had a new client coming that morning. I was setting the table and brewing the tea for him. You've always got to make tea in Britain. It fills people with warmth and makes them feel at home. They've got to feel at home if they're going to be scammed. There's a few things I'd ask of my clients and things they'd ask of me. I'd ask them to bring along personal belongings of the dead they wished to speak to. Often it was jewelry or antiques. One time a couple of bereaved parents brought their dead child stuffed bear. I didn't feel good about that paycheck. Some of my clients would ask me to have things that might comfort them. Handkerchiefs, their favorite fizzy beverage, cigarettes. This guy asked for lychees. Weird. I had spent the last night running around food stores trying to find the damn things. In the end, I could only get a hold of some canned ones and hope that would suffice. He arrived early. He was wearing a beaten leather jacket and looked around 50 years of age. He smelled like sour tobacco and must. He was silent and didn't give much away. I hated his sort. He had no wedding ring, no tattoos with any names written in faded ink, no scars nor anything. He was a page of invisible ink that I'd have to look over. Come in, come in and sit. I pointed to my table in my workroom and he sat gruffly. You must be Lucian Winwood. Pleasure to meet you. At the leeches, he glanced at the table and my porcelain teapot. I slipped the can onto the table. I prefer fresh, but I'll make do. I've never been to one of you lot. I'm curious, real curious. How long you been at this? All my life, I lied effortlessly. I've always seen things others didn't. The first ghost I ever spoke to was my twin brother. He died when I was five. He introduced me to Ether, the world in which we all must one day inhabit. Is there anyone in particular you'd like me to speak to today? You tell me, he said, pouring himself a long cup of tea and cracking open the tin of lychees with the tin opener I'd provided. I think I have someone here, an older woman, very austere and strong. She, I think, yes, Jan, her name is Jan, or something that sounds like that. She wants me to tell you that she's real proud of you. She sees that you've not accomplished all you wanted, but there's still time. Keep at it, boy. That's what she's saying. Feed someone too much positive, and they think you're flattering their ego. Scruffy clothes told me this guy was down on his luck. His sort always liked the idea that it might get better. That sounds like my great aunt. Though she ain't called Jan, she's called Nan. My auntie Nan, he said. He popped a lychee into his mouth and cracked it open with his teeth. You ain't got her husband, my uncle, Ger, Gerald, Jerry, no, but she's saying he's doing real well where he's at. I said, the quickest way to get people to believe you is to indicate that there's a limit to what you can do. Give too much, and they'll think the fruit basket is too good to be true. It is, but they don't need to know that. Jeremy, but you're close enough, 
Maybe you are the real deal. Boy, I'm sure he's doing real well. He popped another lychee into his mouth. There was a callousness to the way he spoke, a chill. The room was uncomfortably cold. My heating was cranked up so it didn't make sense for the temperature to have fallen so low. Then I felt it, just the smallest of touches. A hand on my shoulder, all the hairs on my neck were standing. Tell him he'll rot. A voice said, barely a whisper. It moved from ear to ear. Tell him there's pain waiting, hot and searing. Lucian seemed to notice my sudden unease, and a grin touched the corners of his lips. He popped another lychee into his mouth and savored the crack as he split it apart in his mouth. Its juices dribbled down his chin. Tell him Harry Haywither is waiting for him, and he won't catch me by surprise this time. The voice said, a wisp behind my head. I flinched around to look behind me, yet there was nothing. Just a small floating specter of dust. That's someone for me, Lucian asked. Yeah, I have. Harry Haywither, he says he's waiting for you. For the first time in my career, I told the truth. Lucian smirked and popped another lychee into his mouth. It cracked apart like a shattered skull. I was dumbstruck. My fingers were numb and the backs of my ears uncomfortably hot. Oh, I'm sure he's waiting. Can't wait to see him again. He was one of my favorites. Lucian took great delight in his words. My hands were shaking and my nerves were shot when the second voice came, weak and frightened. Ask him why, why, oh why me? It said, lonely and longing. It's Fred, Fred Boyd. Ask him why, did he even know my name? I've got Fred here, Fred Boyd. He's asking, why? I said and Lucian shifted in his seat. Why not? Pleasure, it's why we do anything, isn't it? Us humans, we've got urges to tickle. Appetites, Lucian shrugged. Life would be a lot simpler if we all just did what we wanted. To heck with the consequences, to heck with everyone else. What appetites? My voice was uneven and shaky. He shrugged and bit into another lychee. Crunch, the noise made my back straighten up. Take the lychees off him. Another voice came. This one was angry. It was deep and booming and nearly shook me out of my seat. Take the lychees off him. That sick, mother, Satan. Take them off him. This is Gary Tunnick. Tell him I'll rip his eyeballs out. Tell him, you tell him now. I've got Gary Tunnock here, I said. I reached out for the tin, but Lucian snatched them back. Spectres of dust floated around the room, illuminated by the wobbly candle light. It was real. Ghosts, spirits of the dead, all of it. They were all around us, drifting. But why were they drifting around Lucian? Why were there so many? And all of them men. Angry, furious men. Gary Tunnock. Oh, I remember him. He fought like hell. Well, he didn't fight hard enough. Lucian smirked at me. He looked under the table and at my knobbly knees. Have you ever tried lychee? Sharp, sweet, lovely, and round. You can crack them open with your teeth and all their juices spill out. Delicious. He took another lychee and the voices around me groaned and swirled. Another voice came, older and weathered by empty years. I was his first. If only I were his last. That smirking woman and her evil, yappy dog of a nephew. Kill him. Kill him. Empty the world of his scourge. It said with great appetite. Lucian only smirked, picking the last lychee from the tin. He held it beneath his teeth, keeping his lips spread apart so that I could see. He pressed down and the lychee bulged and cracked. Translucent juices slipped down his chin and congealed in his beard. It isn't hard to do. Boy, do men scream though. You gotta cut them off. The jewels. Once you've peeled back the skin, they ain't so different from lychees really. Tough. Damn it. But boy, are they ever so sweet. He smiled. I want them to know. All those men around you. How very sweet they all tasted. That was when I realized it was time for a career change. 